there. Call to order the uh, work session, May, May 17th work session for the Lycomico County Council. Uh, we're in the middle of budget talks. The first uh, department on the agenda this morning is uh, planning and zoning. Uh, Mr. Jack Lennox, good morning. Thank you, Mr. Cannon. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We'll certainly let you lead off if you. Sure, thank you. Uh, I'd like to explain briefly how we basically followed all of our budget directives, uh, submitted through the executive, the uh, level funded operating budget, uh, a few minor changes within the budget itself, but uh, something that, uh, that worked out well for us this year and, and obviously we appreciate not having to do the, uh, the reduction budget again. Uh, it made it a little bit easier getting by. So we do have in front of you a level funded operating budget uh, there's a line in for uh, capital, which I consider to be the small C, not on the big capital list, uh, for two additional vehicles. That replaces, we're not adding to the fleet, obviously. We, uh, we're replacing some, some aged vehicles that we have, and, and that's part of the executive's intention to try to update the, uh, the fleet in general and, and to try to keep on a basically a efficient uh, timetable. What are the ages of those aged? Vehicle. Oh man! What year? Um, I, mean, I don't. I don't have the list of cars in front of me right now. Mm -hmm. But uh, trust me, the the costs yeah. start to to build up in terms of the maintenance, and, and we're just better off. Sure. Well, still be up to like the sure, I'd, I'd be happy to get. I'd be happy to get you that list. Just the mileage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, thank you. Yeah, there's no problem. With that. Who who would be driving those? Um, at this point, the way that we're looking at it is. Um, Pate Matthews is driving a tracker, which actually had been totaled once. It was one of those situations where um, the insurance company paid us and then we bought it back. Yeah. If I remember um, correctly, one time he was driving a dilapidated Ford Crown Vic or something. The, the Crown Vic, we still have one, which uh, we last time around we got Mr. Pollitt's old car. So I, I know Rick DeWire still has that. Um, we would probably keep the tracker because, frankly, you know, it, it doesn't have a clear title on it because of the junk. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. it's also four-wheel drive, and occasionally we have to, you know, take a trip out to Muddy Hole Road, aptly, right. aptly named. Yes. And, um, and it's good to have that sort of as backup. We have right now no additional backup cars on our side of the hall. Uh, if anybody, if I would have to go out, if anybody has to go out that's not assigned a vehicle. So right now, the only ones that are assigned vehicles, and we have no take home, never have, is the inspectors. Mm -hmm. So they each have the vehicle, and we like to have at least one backup. And frankly, that one's practically up on blocks at, uh, at roads right now. So what happens if they get called after hours? If they get called after hours, which happens occasionally, uh, Kevin, for example, will drive in and use his own vehicle, or if it's at a distance from his house, he'll pick up the car. If, okay. if he's got to get out to Nanakoke or something, which isn't, which isn't likely. Okay. Um, but, um, yeah, we do not have, as you can tell, a, a significant mileage budget. We manage to deal with it with the regular So they cars. don't get called that often after hours? No. Pate will occasionally, um, as, as you probably know, Larry, from a fire department standpoint, right. Uh, if we have to declare something to be uninhabitable, right. uh, that'll happen on the weekend sometimes. I got you. Uh, but no, but no one is technically on call. I was thinking it was more often than not. Kevin, probably more than others. Uh, he will get calls. We do a lot of work, as you know, fire safety is a, when I say countywide, it includes all the municipalities. Um, he will get a call at night sometimes if the police department has an issue at, at midnight at a, at a bar and they think they're over capacity. Right, right. He'll, he'll have to go out. Uh, as he says, he's not on call, but he takes calls. And if he can't respond, uh, we call one of the other guys. Okay. It honestly doesn't happen too often. Okay. Yeah. That's, um, thank you. Sure. It, it does occasionally, but, but we cover as best we can. Uh, so in terms of the budget that we submitted for you, I, I think everything's in order. We wouldn't have proposed any changes at this point. Uh, one of the reasons I believe that we're having this important discussion this morning, though, is uh, some changes on the city side of my life. Uh, right. when, when Mr. Strasburg delivered the budget to you um, last month, uh, he mentioned that literally that 
day, the night before, that morning, we had gotten some information from the city that they were looking at some uh, rather substantial reorganization. And their reorganization goes far beyond uh, what, say, my department's involvement would be. But yet, we've got a role in this as well. And uh, we've been trying to get a, a better handle on this over the last few weeks. And my understanding is city council had at least some sort of tentative agreement yesterday morning. Uh, I've been trying to get up with the mayor and, and Ms. Glantz is out today to try to figure out what this number is. Um, I have gotten through the years um, a, a figure that varies somewhat, but of late has we've got a little bump from the city last year, up to $163,000. Uh, they're showing us at this point with a reduction of somewhere around 50, between 50 and $60,000. That is not something we've negotiated. It's not something that we've had any input on. Um, I've just found out yesterday afternoon in anticipation of this meeting, because obviously I don't want to come in and just tell you we've got a lot of questions and I have no answers. Um, if I could hand out, Mr. Cannon, a, a, a job ad that showed up in the paper this week. Sure. Frankly, I just shared this with uh, Mr. Stroudsburg and the executive this morning, so we're all trying to figure out the implications of this. So is this how you get most of your information? Of late, <laughs> of, of late um, it seems to be. Okay. And that's important. I asked, um, and I mean this seriously, I asked the mayor yesterday afternoon at the end of the day if he would like to come join us this morning. <laughs> um, because I'm put in an awkward position of trying to explain to you what the city's goals are and what their intent is and how all the various pieces are going to work. Um, he did have a, a conflict, uh, something with fire service, I understand, this morning. So um, uh, it is important, I believe, that we, and I obviously looking at Wayne and, and the executive, to need to have a discussion with the city about not just what their intentions are now, in the budget that's before before you for 18, but also figure out where we're going with this. Uh, just as an example, there's money in the city budget to do some feasibility on a new city hall, um, not involving my department particularly, but there is, there's a lot of movement taking place out there. I, if I could try to explain to you what I understand the mayor's intention here is. He has proposed a total reorganization of their, what we had always called Department of Public Works. They have split out water and sewer, the, the, um, the plants themselves, under the name Water Works. And that is being headed up by Mr. Moulds. The rest of Public Works is now called Infrastructure and Development Department, that being the name at the top of that, um, that job ad. That is being headed up by Amanda Pollock. It's intended to be a one-stop for all permit, city permit-related activity so that they would have a consolidated review of engineering, of some of their planning work, and we can talk a little bit more about what we think that means, as well as building inspector. So they've taken the building function and put it under um, under that department as well. Now, is that something we were doing? Building inspection? No. We no, that would be Bill Holland's department, okay. um, which includes in the city, it's a building inspector, well, the head building inspector, they, they are their own zoning administrator, they always have been, as well as plumbing. On the county side, plumbing is handled through the health department, but in the city, it's, it's, it's through the city. They've chosen to take that over. Um, our city work, from a permitting standpoint, really only involves, involves fire safety, which is significant. And my understanding is that that is not changing. And in fact, hopefully we would strengthen that role. Uh, that is something that I need to have confirmed by the mayor. That's been part of our discussions over the last couple of weeks. Um, electrical board, that is done on a county basis as well. Um, 
that's an enterprise account and pretty much self-sufficient, but that's under my department. In addition, so other than that, the city handles pretty much its own permitting. Uh, the mayor is a planner at heart and would like to have more planning capacity and has decided that they would like to invest in this department with someone now termed a city planner. Up until actually reading this, I did not understand the extent to which uh, these obligations uh, or, or intentions, I guess, uh, are looking to be filled by this. It's interesting, you can see a number of projects out there that they would like to have undertaken. Um, right now, a lot of this is at a conceptual basis. We had worked with them on the urban greenway plan, on the bicycle master plan. Did not work on the city park master plan. That was handled through Mr. Moltz. Uh, a lot of what the mayor's interests are involves something called urban design. We do not have someone who does urban design. Um, landscape architecture, we do not have that. Um, so it's trying to fill what they perceive of to be a, um, I guess, a gap in expertise, but also included under their direction, specifically do their stuff. Um, so you can see the types of projects. It, it would appear to open the door in the future to additional expansion of responsibilities. That's very speculative. Um, we need to hammer this out with them. And I, and I think they wouldn't argue that point. Um, we need to figure out long term what this means for us and our relationship. Uh, I briefed the, um, the commission and, and Mark at the last meeting of everything I knew at the time. Um, you know, we are a joint agency you know, and have been for a long time. It, it would appear that that is still continuing, at least in the short term, we need to resolve where we're heading long term from a budget, if only from a budget standpoint, but also functionally. You know, there are departments, we are the only county that has a shared department. Uh, there is certainly enough work to do out there for us um, if, we sued to be, if we choose to be, you know, a standalone county like everyone else, or if the city decides in their own mind that they want to move ahead. But we need to know what that means for our budget. Um, from my standpoint, if they do manage to find someone who can do all of that, that's a pretty significant undertaking. Um, and, you know, obviously I wish them well. Our, our fortunes are closely tied. Um, but at this point, we're looking at it, it would appear to be a reduction in their payment to us of 50 to 60,000. Now, something separate from this that you don't see, and that is that the city has enacted their own GIS department. So they have taken, and they had a couple of really talented people in their public works office, have relocated them to IT, city IT, and are looking to um, enhance their capability of supporting the other departments. There's a lot of GIS work, and I know that from a, from a county council standpoint, you might think of it in terms of our agricultural land, subdivision development, with the city, it's a different level. It's interaction between their Department of Neighborhood Services, which is called Code Compliance, Housing, what well, used to be called count, Code Compliance. Neighborhood Services and Code Compliance. Yeah, which is now Housing and Community Development. It is. And so what they do, and, and, and they're very driven, the word metrics I keep hearing, very numbers driven. How many citations? How many this? How is the enforcement with that? That's tied in very closely from a GIS standpoint with the police department. So we have had less interaction, let's say, with the county sheriff about this than we do with the police chief. Um, so tying together, a lot of their mapping has to do with police calls, has to do with housing enforcement. Um, Yeah, they've re, they, they moved the parking. Parking used to be under procurement. That is now right. under something else. Please. So, um, yeah, and the man, I'm not sure who manages um, yeah, that's, that's earning the parking garage. Any. I'm not sure. They're, they're, I think they're, they're meter maids and, and their parking is contracted I don't know. out. Yeah. D, no, D, D, yeah, yeah, D is downstairs. Yeah, they have someone, and they, it has been parking and procurement. 
So procurement, as I understand for them, is going to be situated the way that we have it in the county where it's under the, the executive's office, under the mayor's office. Um, so as we move ahead, they're going to be taking on more of their GIS responsibilities. Now, we're still the ones that maintain, if you want to think of it as the platform for this, we're the ones that handle all the aerial photography, all of, all of the lot configurations, and then they can use it for what, what they will. Um, and I'm looking towards the next redistricting. I know how much we all enjoy that. Um, and, and they will be taking on probably some additional mapping functions that they don't have. So uh, that, is, that is happening sort of as a sister to this. Um, I'll defer, obviously, to Wayne on behalf of the executive about this, but uh, I think we, we're kind of on a day-to-day -day basis here. We need, to, we need to get an MOU agreed to. We need for the county and the city to agree on where this is heading and try to figure out what it means for us this year, what it means for us in the future. I'll share anything else that might come to mind. So it sounds like they're intending to grow this new department, this infrastructure and development department. Um, but have the services that are going to get transferred to that, does that equate to that $50,000 reduction that they're paying? I, I think that <clears throat> I think that there's a lot of moving pieces. I think that, frankly, this is a lot to ask of one person in terms of expertise and time in the day. Um, if they intend to take this up, that's that's a big chunk out of sort of you know what we do on the side. I mean, okay. my my primary responsibility obviously is to the county, but then the city does tend to take up time as well. Mm -hmm. And if all those special projects, if only for the special projects, um, you know, it may be a fair trade-off. We're going to have to see. We have to see what happens. What this actually ends up being. July first is I don't have to tell you all. It's coming up real quick. Uh, and um, to get a system in place that, that really turns a whole lot of things were put in and just shook up. <laughs> and, and for me, I mean, my piece is just, is just part of it. The, the city's changed a lot of stuff. The city um, pays 50000 to the planning zone? 163 uh, What, did you say 50000 Yeah, early? it's about a reduction is what they're talking okay. about. Yeah. Jack, what would the yes, answer implications be, and I've had this question posed to me by mm -hmm. uh, citizens be before of why we are combined. Mm -hmm. What would the implications be if, if we just told the city to say, look, you guys do your thing, we'll do ours, and mm -hmm. um, of course we're, we're going to see one implication of a reduction of $160,000, you know, for funding, but mm -hmm. how would your office change? Uh, would it, would you need less employees? Would um, you know, will we change up our, mm -hmm. our planning and zoning boards? Obviously, we would need a different boards than what we have now. So what, what, say, say tomorrow they, they came to us and said, look, we just want to separate. So mm -hmm. how will we move forward mm -hmm. with that? I'll answer the easy question first, Joe. Uh, there is no suggestion at this point. In, in fact, uh, Mayor Day, as, as a former member of the Joint Commission, has endorsed that continuing and that we will continue to have the Joint Commission um, going forward. The issue about staff, however, I, I think that there are savings that come for both sides in terms of expertise, in terms of we don't, it, it's hard to do piece work. It's not like, and I want to say roads, but it's not like roads where you can calculate miles of pavement. There are often times I'm sitting in a meeting, I obviously, I actually don't know who I'm representing because I don't have to. The, you know, the city is in the county. There are issues that deal with both of us. Personally, I like the coordination. I think that I'm a better county planner for being at the city and a city planner for being at the county. But aside from that, things change. And if they decide to pull out, if we decide to pull out, sure, we'd all make the best of it. I think it's going to cost both of us a lot more money. So. Um, there's another factor, if I could, involved with this, and I, and I mentioned one piece of GIS separating uh, to the city. Um, we're doing a lot more work right now for 911 um, with Dave Shipley's office as they move towards what's called enhanced 911. That's another moving target for us. We've got to figure out through Dave 
what is going to be expected of us and what we can reasonably handle. So that's another thing which is sort of still to be resolved. So from our perspective here, from the budget, I mean, you know, if we just pass this as presented mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then we'll find out in a month or two if you need more money, is that kind of the issue? Or, or you don't anticipate coming to us? I mean, I guess maybe this is poor for Wayne. Sure. You know, you know how, how will this affect the budget deliberations? Are we going to be seeing something in a couple of months? Uh, my immediate response to that, Mark, would be that I don't anticipate us coming back to you and asking for additional funding. Mm -hmm. I think what we need to do is is to to determine, you know, how we best organize uh, for this budget year. Um, we would probably then have a much better idea this time next year of what the planning and zoning department would look like going forward. And, and, and I think that Jack and I have had this discussion with the executive that it, it's incumbent upon us at this point in time to have a very uh, intense uh, planning study done mm -hmm. on Jack's department to determine what that department ought to look like going forward. And then we should um, we should initiate discussions with the city in terms of what the continuing relationship is going to be. Uh, I don't particularly like finding out um, this morning what our level of funding is going to be this coming year. Uh, I think that there should have been uh, ongoing, meaningful discussions that didn't take place. Since it didn't take place, I think we need to take charge of that process and insist that those discussions take place. And I would suggest that they ought to take place in the first quarter of the fiscal year. Wait, and I, I'm sorry, this is a little bit off track then. Uh, based on your comment there, there may be other departments that are impacted by this uh, also, by their budget? No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I think it's planning and zoning. I don't, I don't, um, no, I don't think so. Okay. Could, if, if I could just to supplement that a little sure. bit, Wayne. Um, our functions do overlap with some other county offices. Right. We understand that. Um, Your it, department. Yes. Yeah. We understand that in our public works department, there, you know, we have a new director. We've got some things we need to take on there as well. There's going to be the update of the water and sewer plan, which we should have gotten to already. There's going to be all the discussions about, about WIP programs and how those are implemented. So we need to work closely with our sister agency as well to figure that out. And then the other thing I alluded to earlier is uh, emergency services and 911. Mm -hmm. So those two come to mind. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, big change coming forward is, is as you know, is, is the MS4 designation. Yes. And that necessarily involves Jack's department mm -hmm. with public works. So, mm -hmm. so when, when we talk about what the department is going to look like for the f foreseeable future, that is a significant impact. Mm -hmm. So we, we really need to have a good, solid planning discussion uh, about what Jack's department will look like going forward and what other uh, changes are going to, to take place as we address that MS4 designation. And they're interrelated in that respect. Mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't really have anything to do with this sure. budget reduction right. um, in, this, in this current year. So it, it, Jack and I have discussed it. We can make it work this year, uh, but we need to plan for the long term. Now, I, I was I was going to ask uh, why we have so much money in the GIS services, but uh, would mm -hmm. you say this covers any unexpected costs? I mean, how much money can you spend on maps? Uh, they don't change that much day to day, do they? Ah, uh, the, the, the we, we need our own drones. <laughs> sure, sure. The the GIS budget through the years has been been one that raised the question: How much money do you need? And you know, it'll joke: How much do you got? You know, we would use that sort of as, as a floating figure there because that also, you don't see a separate technology 
line in my budget. Mm -hmm. So for example, that does cover um, computers, monitors, etc. It's also an upkeep of um, aerial photography mm -hmm. and a lot of the work that supports. We are the platform for 911. That wasn't always the case. You know, in other systems perhaps, or back in the day it was done on an addressing basis. Now it's done on, it's geolocated. So we are the basis for that. You were a platform last year also. Yes, you know, we it's, were. It's, it yes, seems we like were. it should be a capital. You have to keep, than, right, you have to keep, you, it's the upkeep, it's the maintenance right. of that as well, okay. which is key. You know, used to say in, in, in the old days, <laughs> ah, good enough for planning purposes. Now you got to actually have to dispatch an, an emergency vehicle there and it becomes that much more critical. Well, Dave, Dave Church, who you've come to know with fire service perhaps, Dave spends a lot of time over at 911. Um, probably bring this late to the table, but um, in planning and zoning, as one example, you have a total planning and zoning is 1.8 million, 8.7. Under revenue, you have 800 and some thousand. How come that revenue isn't reflected in in this section, in this portion of it, as an offset, it's reflected in the, it's reflected in the revenue section of the budget. That's we don't right. we don't fold in revenue into general fund departments. And that's why I say so I'm probably coming right. late to the table on this. Right. The only thing it, reason it brought to my attention is because I saw the sixty some thousand as a grant, and that was treated as an offset. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering what the difference was, as to why I that was considered. I, I can explain that. Sure. Um, there, we have several grant sources that can offset salaries. So when you have a listing for um, office personnel, over at the right-hand side, you would say how much of that is offset by grants. That's all. So Michelle knows how much to go in and take from MPO, help support some of our housing programs do. We get a little money from critical area. So she knows to take that money and move it in. Okay. Um, so if you're if you're Taking into consideration that sixty some thousand dollar mm -hmm. grant to offset salaries, why is it as a whole? And I'm I'm sure this isn't the only department. Um, I was just curious as to why, as, as a whole, um, the income that's created, the eight hundred eighty thousand created through income, isn't reflected as an offset as well. Maybe that's a finance issue. Well, it's offset in the it's offset on a consolidated basis in the general fund. Mm -hmm. But from a presentation standpoint, I think it's important for us to understand how much money is being spent in each department. Right. And and it, it, I think I think from a from an accounting standpoint and from a presentation to the public standpoint, I think uh, it, it it makes it clear to everybody looking at the budget. Look how much money gets spent operating that department. The, the revenue offsets um, don't don't change the fact that we're spending 1.8 million dollars mm -hmm. to operate the um, planning and zoning department, irrespective of where the revenue comes from, mm -hmm. whether it's grant, whether it's from the general fund, or fees, um, or fees for all the inspectors. So. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's just presentation, and, and, and personally, I think it's better to see what what are the costs associated with the operation of each department. Oh, I, I agree with you 100%. I was just wondering whether at the very end of that budget process where you have the 1.8 million, maybe it wouldn't hurt to add another line that says revenue. Then the public, when the public sees that, they'll say, oh, well, at least they're doing something to offset the cost. Yeah, what I would suggest is that we could do we could do a separate a separate schedule, a separate exhibit that would show net gross costs, <coughs> offsetting revenue, and net costs. That might be helpful, but I think in terms of presenting the departmental budget, it's better to show what the the, the, the gross costs are, if you will. But if council believes that it would be helpful to have an additional mm -hmm. schedule, uh, you know, that would be fairly easy to do. Yeah. Well, I'm not there to see what goes on and how it's all run, but it seems to me like a, out of a $1.8 million budget, the city's only paying us $160,000. Mm -hmm. $110,000. 
well, they're getting ready to cut it to 110. Um, that there's a big discrepancy, a big discrepancy, and um, I understand. You know, um, if I could answer that from from the president's standpoint, though, there's a good part of my budget that on my office that doesn't have anything to do with the city, which is supported by fees. Well, like I said, you know, we're not sure. there. Sure, I understand. So, you know, it just, and that's what we'd like to drill through in the first yeah. quarter of this coming year, so that we can come back and 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 present a continuing mm -hmm. plan, if you will, for mm -hmm. what this department is going to look like moving forward. Do you have any vacancies, funded vacancies in your department now? Yes, yes. I do. I had a. Um, can I talk about this? Can I talk about anything you want to? You're worried about well, personnel? personnel? Yes, yes. Sir. Yeah, I have, I have two. Employee who retired. I have two. I had a retirement and I had a resignation, um, and that will be something that we'll have to review with the executive in terms of how we address that moving forward. Is that the environmental planner that's shown here? Or? No. No. Okay. Okay. No, that's fine. Okay. I guess what would depend on that is whether or not, um, depending on how much work they were doing, countywide versus county and city. Yes, sir. As to what you do with that position, right? Yes, sir. Exactly. Correct. And what, exactly. And that's why we haven't moved. Yep. Time. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. When did these folks, um, when was this done? When resignations? Yes. I had one resignation, someone's last day was last Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And then one that was a retirement has been coming for a while okay. about, it was in May. Okay. And since it would have not been responsible for us to move ahead with this uncertainty, um, mm -hmm. we're still kind of peddling in place. It was late in the budget cycle. Right? Yes, it was. Any other questions? Yeah. And I'd obviously share those that information with you offline. Thanks. Thank sure. You. Thanks. And I'll get uh, Larry information about the cars. You, well, I'll get you all information about the cars. Okay. Good. Thanks a lot. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The, uh, I'm trying to see where my schedule is. We have financing scheduled in 10 minutes, so we'll, any discussion on the part of council, or we'll just take an informal recess. I have one question. Yes. Um, is everyone okay to meet next Monday at 9.30 for a budget recap session? Yeah. I just want to make sure there aren't any conflicts. Monday. Next Monday. What time is that? At 9.30. How about 7? Mm. Mm. 7.30. <laughs> <laughs> okay.